If you have ever tried to make dispersion in Blender, it may look something like this. So in this video I will try to make a continuous glass dispersion for Cycles and Eevee to make it look more like this. Let's get started. Before I will start, I want to tell you that if you really want to create a nice and realistic glass dispersion in Blender, probably the best way is by using the LuxCore render engine. It's free, and although I have thought that it would be hard to install and use, it was actually really easy. You just download LuxCore from their website and install it as any other add-on. Then you can simply create a glass object with an accurate dispersion. And if you add a laser light, you can make this. I will try to do something similar in Cycles, but the chromatic aberration can be used both in Cycles and Eevee. Now let's take a look at what we need to know before we start making the continuous glass dispersion. This is a common way of creating glass dispersion. Just add three glass shaders on top of each and then change them to RGB and shift their IORs. The problem is that the colors are separated, so if we want more extreme dispersion, we can see gaps between the colors. So, to start, we need to separate refraction and reflection. To do so, we can use this setup. Refraction BSDF mixed with glossy BSDF. Factor is the Fresnel node. This setup allows us to modify more finer details of the glass. So far, the glass is the same as if we would use principled BSDF. Now we must somehow modify the refraction of the glass. I have seen this technique before, but I believe that I can improve it. We cannot use the whole spectrum at once, but we can separate the glass into fractions with different colors of the spectrum and associate a different IOR with each color. Then if we scale the map to make it tiny and set the same IOR for all colors, the glass should be white. After changing the IOR for each color, we should see continuous dispersion. There is a very simple way to do so. In Blender we have something which is called white noise. This note works both in Cycles and Eevee. There are tiny squares with different values, from 0 to 1, from black to white, and on average they make grey. I would like to use a color spectrum which uses RGB colors and looks similarly to the normal color spectrum. So nothing like this. These colors have to, on average, create pure white. I found out that the spectrum has to contain dark edges and evenly distributed red, green and blue colors, each with a value of 4. Then we get the same color as we would get with an RGB node, but it contains a whole range of colors. Of course, this color spectrum does not contain, for example, violet, but these colors combined gave us pure white, so I will work with it. You can change these colors to whatever you want. Just remember that by using different spectrum, the whole glass can have an unpleasant tint. Now we need to associate each color with a different IOR. The map range node can associate each number from 0 to 1 with any other values. For example, with our indices of refraction. 2 minimum will be our minimum IOR and 2 maximum will be our maximum IOR. To make it more user-friendly, let's make two values. One is the IOR of the glass and the second will be the amount of refraction. So just add these values together and plug them into the last socket. The IOR value plugs into the penultimate socket. Now we can easily change the IOR of the glass and also its dispersion. Also don't forget to plug the IOR to the Fresnel node. It's worth mentioning that each wavelength is refracted differently, so if we say that the glass has an index of refraction 1.45, it means sort of on average for all colors. Joseph von Fraunhofer is author of something which is called Fraunhofer Lines. He discovered that if you separate sunlight to a color spectrum, you can see some dark spots. 
These wavelengths are missing because there are some elements in our atmosphere which absorbs these specific wavelengths and therefore we cannot see them. Fraunhofer gave them names after letters of the alphabet. IOR is different for each wavelength, so if we are saying that glass has IOR 1.45, it actually refers to a specific wavelength for the Fraunhofer lines. It's easier than trying to estimate IOR from all colors. This color has a wavelength of 589.29 nanometers and is referred as the Fraunhofer D line, caused by sodium which absorbs this specific yellow color. I think it is very interesting, but I will not use this in the shader. The IOR value there is referring to the lowest IOR. I think that that way it is easier to see what's going on, because the dispersion is happening just in one direction, from the lowest to the highest IOR, and not somewhere from the middle. Ok, so we assume that the IOR of this color spectrum will change linearly. But that is not true. This graph shows that the bluer the color, the higher the IOR. The change is not linear, but curved a bit. Here you can see what does it mean in practice. The red color gets refracted the least and the blue color way more. So in the end we get a wider strip of blue color. To implement this into our shader we just have to add the RGB curves and shape them into the shape we want. Let me stretch it a bit, just to see it more clearly. The blue color is refracted the most, and as we get closer to red, the IOR decreases in this rate. Just one last thing. Before we will turn this node setup into a node group, we need to be able to change the color of the glass. This is actually super easy, because the output from our color ramp is white. Just add a mix RGB node and multiply our color with any color you want. If you want to turn this node setup into a node group, you can use these values to control the color of reflection and refraction separately, as well as roughness of reflection and refraction. You can download this node setup for cycles from BlendSwap, and if you want to use it in EV, I have implemented it into my Glass 2 shader. Just set continuous dispersion to 1 and set its strength. I have created a light, which emits almost a straight beam of light, and with the right cycles settings I was able to get this. These are the settings. It took like 40 minutes for a single image, so I still recommend using LookScore, but I'm happy with that as a proof of concept. Now you can make millions with your dispersion art.